Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. I'm joined by my colleague, the one and only head book buyer of Forbidden Planet, the mighty Laura Dodd right here. And today we are greeting to the show the one, the only Rachel Harrison, author of Cackle. How are you, mate? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you, Dodd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, good, good. We're gearing up for Comic Con and we will have some copies of Cackle at Comic Con. What can you tell the um, the viewers out there about Cackle if they haven't heard anything so far? So Cackle is about Annie Crane, who has just been unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend. She's about to turn 30 and having a little bit of a um, panic about it. And she moves to a small town uh, in upstate New York. She leaves New York City for a small town. And while she's there, she meets Sophie, who is a mysterious townswoman who is very beautiful and enigmatic and takes a special special interest in Annie. Um, but the rest of the town seems afraid of Sophie and for reasons that will be revealed as the book goes on. Um, but it's witchy and ultimately a tale of um, learning to love and accept yourself with a lot of spiders. <laughs> Yes, yeah, but there is a lot of spiders. I um I messaged our stores about it when I first read the proof, and I said it's cozy and weird and full of spiders. <laughs> and they were just like, "Cool, we're we'll reading." <laughs> so it's gone down well. <laughs> um, so in regards to you touched on briefly there the um the character of Sophie. So it's something I find super interesting in this is the idea of, of how we perceive a witch and then how Sophie's perceived as quite kind of a um, very sexual, very kind of powerful woman um, and not the kind of old style crone. Um, was that a very kind of conscious decision of yours to kind of give her that oomph? <laughs> it was, because I was thinking a lot about the witch trope um, and I have a lot in common with Annie. I started writing this book on the eve of my 30th birthday, but I was thinking a lot about like why witches are villainized mm -hmm. when really they're just like women who live alone in the woods, which sounds kind of ideal. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was playing with that idea a lot and why are they vilified and why are they perceived as like the old crone and that whole trope. Um, and I kind of wanted to flip that on its head and um and also I think it was almost scarier for everybody in the town that Sophie is so like flawlessly beautiful as opposed to if she was you know the depiction of the the crone like I think a lot of um in Snow White the classic Disney movie where it's this like wart covered old woman mm -hmm. I think if Sophie was that wart covered old woman the town wouldn't be as afraid of her because they don't perceive her as a threat mm -hmm. but there's something about like a very gorgeous woman who's in total control of herself that I think gets everybody a little like shaken up um so it was definitely conscious yes yeah and um you, you I think you just um mentioned before about how when you started writing Cackle so were you a similar age to the protagonist and did that kind of help inform her yes and yeah. Annie in many ways is me I say that she's like the worst of me like all of my like like self-pitying tendencies and self-deprecating tendencies I've kind of poured into Annie hoping I would get it all out of my system but I, I still am that way um, but also just the fear of of getting older in this next chapter um, when I was a teenager I had the privilege of like making older friends like cool older friends who I could talk to about you know going to college and things like that and so as I was going into my 30s I was like I need somebody like that who can like usher me into this next phase of existence mm -hmm. and I just didn't have anybody so Sophie was kind of like my dream friend yes yes yeah I think I think there does come a time it's almost like that um quite often at kind of high school and stuff and like college when you're kind of looking up to the older cool kids and just like one day that'll be me <laughs> I wanted yeah. that for this. I was like, yeah. where's where's that now? I need that now. So <laughs> I I'm never less had scared that about 
leaving my twenties. Mm-hmm. I'm happy <laughs> to be rid of my twenties now, but at the time I was, <laughs> I was <laughs> reluctant about it. <laughs> Hearing how laser focused you are on your, on your character. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I might already know the answer to this question, but one of the things that Laura and I are always fascinated about is in, in terms of the creative process, what comes first? Is it the setting that you paint or is it, is it the, the characters that exist within that setting? For Cackle, how did it work for you? I think it was basically like a, a con, for me, it's kind of a concept and then I need to find the character voice. So there's been times where I've had like an idea for a cool book, like a very cool concept but I couldn't find the right character or voice to kind of execute that idea. So with Cackle, I knew I wanted to write something kind of a contemporary fairy tale, um, get into a little bit of folk horror. And so it was that. And then in combination with, well, what character would fit well for this concept and help me explore that and help me get into like the witch trope and then finding Annie and getting into Annie's voice because I write first person is really important for me. So it's a little bit of both, but if I don't find the right character, the whole thing falls apart. So I think character is the most crucial for me. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. I, I think it's fascinating what's happening with uh, fairy tale at the moment. It's just, again, this is another thing that Dodd and I talk about a lot, which is that I think the true dark spine of fairy tale has been really rediscovered in the modern era in a way that it was absent and Disneyfied for quite a long time, but that's really not the case now with authors like yourself and your contemporaries. I mean, there's a lot of darkness in the fairy tales and I think it was like fun discovering, like going back, cause I was raised in the nineties on Disney movies. And so like getting older and being like, wait, what was the Hans Christian <laughs> Andersen Little Mermaid? Like what, what, it's so dark and finding out like the, how, you know, they were just so glossed over Mm -hmm. and turned into like children's content from what they were so fascinating to me. And I think there's so much there. And I think a lot of us discover fairy tales as kids and kind of miss a lot of the like true horror of it. And even like Hansel and Gretel, you're like, oh yeah, she's eating kids. And then you get older and you're like, how come this was okay for me to read (laughs) as a child? And how come I was so unfazed by it? Yeah, it's so true. And is that where, um, so I obviously have to touch on the best character, Ralph. Um, So is that, because it does feel a little kind of Disney, the whole kind of Ralph in his like, in his hat and almost like tap dancing around and stuff. (laughs) Was that kind of your nod to Disney? I, I really don't know where Ralph came from. I've been asked this question so many times and I like racked my brain. I was like, where did you come up with this? (laughs) And I'm like, not sure. I think maybe I wanted a little bit of levity or it felt just organic to the story. And I did want it to feel fairy tale esque, but in like a dark way. So like in a, a Disney movie, there would be a cute creature. Like I think of Cinderella and the, um you know little mice helping her get which if it was a real mouse it'd be a different story but like they're cute in the in the animation and so I think yeah part of me was like if I'm going to do like a fairy tale and kind of a dark version of that fairy tale um what would the creature be like the creature sidekick and it would be a like creepy little spider who's also very true and then I think once I created once I had that idea then Ralph kind of, I got, it it got away from me and I was putting him in hats because I just loved him so much. (laughs) So I don't think I intended it to be as whimsical as it was, Mm. Um, but it was kind of hard to resist (laughs) once I started getting going. I think it's a very bold inversion of the, uh, of the Jiminy Cricket archetype. (laughs) That's what the hat made me think of. Yeah. (laughs) They need to make cuddly Ralphs. That's the next thing. The next I have one. I have one. I have like a little, I found online, they had like tiny little spider plushes. And so I, I was like, I have to have one. And I did get a little hat. Oh my God. <laughs> Rachel, have you always had a positive relationship with spiders? No, I, I'm not. Well, I'm not. 
if one's crawling on me, I will scream. But now I think because of cackle, if I see one, I'm like, hey, little bud. And they're probably like, oh my God, there's a big lady talking to me. Um, but I was not, like, I'm not like, I don't like bugs. I'm not great in nature. So uh, it's not like I was like, I love spiders. I don't, again, I like don't know where that really came from. Um, but I would say that writing cackle has made me more bug friendly. She says, I say that now, like I go yeah. outside in two seconds <laughs> yeah. and there's one crawling on me and you'll hear me <laughs> screaming across the Atlantic. Um, there's another kind of uh, element of cackle, especially like just the kind of atmospheric setting and kind of there's loads of uh, really like delicious food, uh, like, you know, mentions of various pies and coffees and stuff, which is really kind of obviously warming, especially this time of year. So if you had to pick your favorite, like cheer up meal, like when it's cold and, and awful outside, what, what would you be eating? Sweet. I would probably go for like a pumpkin muffin, mm -hmm. some kind of pumpkin dessert. And then like my real comfort meal is like Kraft macaroni and cheese, the box oh, and, cheese and ginger <laughs> ale. I don't know why, but that's like my, if I'm like in a mood mm. and I like need to feel better, that's like my, like some people are like, I'm going to cry over ice cream. I'm like, I'm going to cry over Kraft mac and cheese. So that's like my comfort, but anything, I mean, I love soup. This is a very soup time of year. Um, I don't know. I guess it's funny because people bring up the food in the book and I was editing the book during the pandemic when like we couldn't really go out and I think that's why everything <laughs> it's just like fantasizing about like because I was just at home like eating cereal so yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of fantasy <laughs> I love the, the degree to which uh, Laura savored asking that question oh. and, you, and you savored answering it that, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it feels very autumnal very full-esque mm -hmm. In its in its in its heartening warmth, I I read that uh, is this true, Rachel? You used to work on TV game shows. I did, yeah. After I graduated college, I was living in New York City, and I worked on uh, the New Leewood game, and then I worked on a pilot for the Exit List, which I think was a show in the UK, and they were trying to bring it to the US, and so we did like a pilot, and it didn't get picked up here. Um, but yeah, I worked as a PA, so it was like sixteen hour days on set. It's not glamorous, but it's cool. It's cool as a line in a bio. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's great as a line in a bio. I just wondered if, if uh, being involved in an enterprise like that was the direct through line between that and you becoming a horror writer. <laughs> uh, there was some horrifying experiences, but I went to school for screenwriting. Um, and then I, I always, um, so I always was writing, um, but it was kind of a windy path to get yeah. to publish my first book um but yeah I should write it I could write it like a horror short story set on like behind the scenes yes on a tv game show yeah that would no, be that, that would be link the two yeah right yeah. on that would say the two halves <laughs> together yeah for sure Dodd we are raging towards the end of this conversation so have you got a couple more questions to close us out on um, yeah, so I'm always kind of uh, intrigued, obviously, horror authors where your kind of influences uh, have come from. So um, what's your kind of, I suppose, first kind of vivid horror memory, whether it's a film or, an, or a book you read kind of as a teen? Like, uh, yeah, what was your first kind of experience of, of horror? So I, I get asked this a lot and I was thinking because I watched Jaws very young. I watched Alien very young, which are like horror movies, but nothing scared me as much as like Who Framed Roger Rabbit or like Fern Gully, Hexus or um, The Great Mouse Detective. There's that like really scary bat. Um, so I was more like horrified by like children's content again <laughs> than I was by like the horror movies that I saw. I mean, I don't go in the ocean still, so maybe... <laughs> I was scarred in my own way from that. Um, and then I also remember, I think, reading The Lottery by Shirley Jackson when I was uh, yeah. in a well, freshman in high school was my first like 
because I think I always thought of horror as Stephen King mm -hmm. and to read this story and be like, this is horror too, kind of open, um, broaden my horizons to the genre a little bit more too. I, th I think that's a great answer because the, the lottery, of course, is a story that just never leaves you. Uh, and uh, it sits there as a presence in the back of your mind from whenever you've read it for the rest of your life. Uh, You'll never look at your neighbors the same. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. It's there. It, they are eating away at you, at your subconscious the whole time. And I, I love the Hugh Frame Roger Rabbit uh, um, uh, um, uh, answer, mainly because on account of my advanced age, I saw that when I was at, when I was at uh, college. And uh, I have, and I saw it more than once in a theatre, and I have never seen a bunch of 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 like preschool kids freak out more than <laughs> during the final reveal, yeah. where where where, where um, Christopher Lloyd's eyes pop out. That just the kids in the audience were terrified, terrified during that sequence. That that scene is scarier than most horror movies in their entirety <laughs> yeah so um what are you currently reading and what are you kind of most looking forward to um reading soon so i'm currently reading this thing between us by gus moreno mm -hmm. um i could i will be recommending this book for the rest of my life i'm obsessed with it it is so good it's heartbreaking but there's a lot of humor and it's terrifying. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant book. I love it. I, I, I love when you're reading a book and you feel it becoming your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how, what I'm reading right now. What am I looking forward to? There's so many books coming out that I feel like very overwhelmed. There's a book called um, Sisters of a Lost Nation mm -hmm. by Nick Medina. Um, and that is coming out, I know, at least in the US in the spring. And I read an early copy of that and I'm excited for other people to get their hands on it. Wonderful. So that's what and I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I think there's some excellent choices. And, and Rachel, do you think you could, we could close out by asking what you've got coming out next? I'm asking you a question that I know the answer to, but be, that's because I want you to tell the good people at home. <laughs> um, so my werewolf book, Such Sharp Teeth, comes out in the UK, I want to say in the spring. Yes, I think it's May, uh, May 23, I think. Um, and then I also have a short story collection called Bad Dolls coming out in the what, UK. What a brilliant title. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, spooky Dolls. Um, yeah. And then I am working on uh, my a draft of my fourth book, which is going to be coming out in the US uh, next October. I'm trying to be on that like Halloween season, a book, yeah. <laughs> a book every, every Halloween. So um, hopefully I can keep that up. And do you have a title for that book yet, Rachel? The working title is Black Sheep. Oh, yeah. It's a family drama. <laughs> Horror well, family drama. Thank, thanks so much uh, for joining us. I know I, as we started with it's been a real treat for Laura, a real treat for me as well, because we're so proud to be uh, Time Books, so proud to be publishing Cackle, which everybody watching this conversation can order from the links attached to this conversation mm -hmm. and it will absolutely not not disappoint the perfect gift for halloween season and Thank it's really so much. it's really lovely to meet you mate yeah lovely to meet you maybe next year we'll be back here doing it again right on let's hope so and remember <laughs> if ever in london you've got to come and visit us at yeah. 179 uh, shaftesbury avenue it, it's inevitable uh yeah i have family over there so <laughs> oh nice okay open invitation <laughs> Well, bring as many people as you can, and please bring Ralph. That's that's yeah. the big thing. <laughs> I'll bring little plush Ralphs. <laughs> I'll be in my suitcase at TSA, and I'll be like, uh. <laughs> "Thanks so much, Rachel. Take care. Thank Take you. care, Dodd. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye." If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.